story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. Whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trust. I will exercise my art solely for you. The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. Now, the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Now, uh, let me have a look at your throat, Mr. Carlton. Open your mouth as wide as you can, please. My throat hurts, I told you. I I just can't sit still. I I feel terrible. All right. All right, you can get up and move around if you want. You've got to do something for me. Dr. Gillespie examined me. I don't, I don't see why you have to waste time going over the same thing again. I'm only doing it at Dr. Gillespie's request. Now, just how long ago were you bitten by the dog? Four days ago. It's hurting worse all the time. I, I can hardly stand on my leg. Uh, well, you'd better get back into bed. Well, aren't you going to help me? Aren't you going to give me any treatment? You'll I, be I... taken care of as soon as I've consulted with Dr. Gillespie. I'll, I'll be right back. My mother's in the waiting room. Why can't she come in? She can come in later. Just examined Mr. Carlton. Well, Jimmy, what did you think? I diagnose it as the onset stage of hydrophobia. Four days after being bitten by yeah. a dog? Ah. Well, I know the usual period of incubation is from three to eight weeks. Or longer. Or longer, yes, but just the same. All the symptoms are present. Anxiety, depression, discomfort in the area of the wound. But he has no fever, Jimmy. Nevertheless, we'd better prepare for pastor treatment. Uh, well, I guess there's no choice about that in any case. Until we're certain. Well, we'd better tell his mother. Parker! Parker isn't here, Dr. Gillespie. She's out to with her. Oh, well, well, Diana. Uh, is Mrs. Carlton out there? Yes, she is. Uh, uh, hmm. well, will you show her in, please? Of course. Doctor, we'll see you now, Mr. Carlton. Well, I must say it's about time. Well, Doctor... I'm afraid we may have to start Pasteur treatment on your son, Mrs. Carlton. I knew it. I knew it. I told him. I knew something would happen the day that child next door got that that mongrel of his. You mean your son wasn't bitten by a stray dog? No. That dog belongs to a boy named Bobby, a spoiled little brat. I knew that animal would bite somebody. And now my poor Edward is here because of that. You say the boy lives right next door to you? Yes. Thank you. Uh, your son is waiting to see you. He's in room 209. Miss Verner will show you the way. Oh, my poor boy. My poor Edward. Jimmy, you better call Wayman. He can drive out in the ambulance and pick up that dog. Yes, we'll need him for observation. With Carlton showing symptoms of hydrophobia, we don't have time for observation. Huh? You must have an absolute diagnosis. Well, that means the animal will have to be destroyed so Uh, we can make a microscopic examination of the brain. uh, uh, The dog has to die before we can discover whether Carlton's suffering from hydrophobia, as you think, or hysteria, as I think. Hey, Doc. There's a kid and a dog playing in that empty lot. Keep it, Edward! Go get it! Oh, that's a good dog! Uh, I'm afraid the dog we're looking for isn't going to be as playful or as healthy as that one, Joe. Yeah. Mm. Guess not. But maybe that kid can tell us where the kid we want to see lives. We'll ask him. Hey, jump now. Come on, Ben. Come on. Hello there, young fellow. Come on. It's a very smart dog you have there. He ought to be smart. He's one quarter collie. Ooh. Makes him very smart, then. What's the other three quarters? Nobody knows. Whatever it is, it's good. <laughs> I'm sure it is. Oh, we're looking for another boy around here and owns a dog, too. His name's Bobby. Well, that's my name. Spot's the only dog in the whole block. Uh-oh. Yeah. Watch out for that animal, Dutch. 
Uh, Bobby, has Spot been acting strangely lately? Like he hasn't been feeling well? Why do you want to know? Well, you know Mr. Carlton, who lives next door to you. Who are you? Are you the dog catcher? No, no, Bobby, I'm a doctor. Mr. Carlton is very sick, and he claims Spot bit him. Sure, Spot bit him. Because that big lug Edward chased me with a broom when I went to get my ball out of his yard. Oh, Bobby, don't get excited, please. He sent you to take Spot away from me, didn't he? Oh, okay. Don't flip your wig. You can't take him. I got a license for him and a new collar and everything. (laughs) Oh, Bobby, I'm sorry, but we have to take him for your protection as well as Mr. Carlton's. I'll put a muzzle on him, mister. I'll keep him in the house all the time. But don't take him away. (laughs) I got him, Doc. Watch your hands, Joe. Bobby, I'll come back tomorrow. I'll, I'll drive you over to the dog pound, and you can pick out another dog. One that's half collie, maybe all collie. I don't want another dog. I want Spot. Shall I put him in the ambulance, Doc? Yes, Joe, put him in. That's the ferocious beast you brave hunters stalk through the jungles of Manhattan. <laughs> well, I didn't stalk him, Doc. I just followed him until I could. Him. Uh, too bad he didn't take a chunk out of you. Oh, I wasn't worried about that, Doc. I figured if he bit me, <laughs> you'd take care of me. Wayman, if that dog had bitten you, I'd have to treat him for tomaine poisoning. Well, Dr. Huh? Gillespie, I admit the dog seems to be all right, but we can't overlook Carlton's symptoms. The dog can't give rabies unless he's got rabies. Why doesn't the dog show some symptoms? They just aren't manifest yet, I guess. Uh, Carlton showed the symptoms early. The dog may develop them late, but he's capable of infecting. Uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Gillespie, the dog has given some indication of being rabid. Where? When? What? Well, when Wayman and I brought him into the ambulance entrance, I tried to give him some water. He backed away from it as though he were afraid. Ah, uh, now, uh, Jimmy. What reaction would you expect from a dog when the dog's been taken away from the master he loves, the boy who feeds him and takes care of him? Well, that's one possibility, of course. I'm telling you that Edward Carlton's suffering from pseudo-hydrophobia, an imaginary ailment brought on by hysteria. Have you ever seen a case of pseudo-hydrophobia before? No, confound it, no, no, well, I haven't. But you know it isn't exactly rare. Give the animal some consideration. Well, I want to, Dr. Gillespie, but we've got to consider the patient, too. Pastor, treatment isn't any fun. Well, now there's being killed. The dog won't enjoy it. Oh, look at the poor thing. Look in my hand. I could give Carton a worse bite than he did. Uh, well, you're right, Jimmy. The patient comes first. Take the dog to the lab, chloroform, and call me when you got the brain ready for examination. Gee, Doc, can't you call somebody else to hold him? He keeps looking at me with them big brown eyes like I was a... Well, like I was a bookie who wasn't paying off on his bets. Yeah, and I keep thinking of that boy, Bobby. So think later, please. Make with the color reform and get it over with. I feel like I'm helping to murder my grandmother. All right, Joe. Hold his head steady. Oh, Doc, will you hurry? I'm telling you, in a minute I'm going to be boiling and I'll get that stuff so diluted it won't be able to put a flea to sleep. Now, what's the matter? Joe, I can't do it. Well, don't look at me. I ain't going to do it. I'm going to hold him for observation instead. Oh, good boy, Doc. <laughs> you, you hear what the doc said, boy? How about that? <laughs> There's a chance Dr. Gillespie is right. But well, we can't keep the dog here. Why not? Well, if Carew found out about it, he'd make us destroy him. Under the circumstances, it's the prescribed thing to do. You, you want I should hide him out while he's hot? How good you're in a rooming house. Well, I got a girlfriend in the Bronx. Got a big house in a, in a yard with a kennel cage. And she's nuts about dogs. Matter of fact, she's kind of a dog herself. <laughs> well, 
Would you tell her to keep the dog caged and stay away from him? Oh, sure. I can go up and feed him myself. All right, you go ahead. But if he starts to act strangely, you let me know right away. Sure, sure, sure thing, Doc. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Ah, Dr. Gillespie, you better be right for both our sakes. What is it, Diana? Dr. Gillespie wants you right away. Hmm? Something wrong? Well, it's Mr. Carlton. He's worse. Oh, I see. He's paralyzed and behaving very strangely. Oh. Sounds like he's growling. Oh. I'm in here. Oh, oh, Jimmy. Jimmy, over here. Come on, over here. Oh, he looks pretty bad. Yeah, I'm afraid you were right, Jimmy. Oh, but it could still be pseudohydrophobia, as you said. Not with these advanced symptoms. The pseudo cases don't go beyond the common symptoms they've heard about. They don't know enough about the disease to simulate the paralysis stage. Okay, we'd better start Pasteur. The moment we finish examining the brain of the dog. Is you ready? Dr. Gillespie, I I sent the dog away, alive, with Wayman. You sent oh, we gotta get him back, Jimmy. He's a menace to anybody who gets near him. We've got to get him back here and destroy him. <laughs> Turn to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment. Continue with the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Well, we can start as soon as Wayman gets back here with the dog. Well, if we could only wait and observe just a few days. Oh, too dangerous, you mean. I can't help feeling that your first diagnosis is right. I don't know why. But... Doctor! See you. Well, Bobby. I tried to stop him, Jimmy, but... It's all right, all right. Well, Dr. Carew saw him and said children weren't allowed. Oh, we'll take care of him, Diana. Just tell Carew that I was expecting him. All right, Jimmy. Uh, Bobby owns the dog that uh, bit Carlton, Dr. Gillespie. Oh, I see. Doctor, I sold my bike. And tomorrow, a fellow's going to buy my skates if he can get the money. But I got six dollars right with me. Here. Oh, but, Bobby, money can't Maybe if you it's... tell Edward that I'll pay his bill for being sick, maybe he'll tell you to let Spot go. Boy, hey, come over here by me. Come on. Bobby, we all have a lesson to learn in this life. And it's a hard lesson. A lesson that teaches us that money won't buy the things we want most. You're being forced to learn it very early with your dog. Then can I give Edward some of my blood? A fusion? That helps sick people to get better. Oh, Bobby, that doesn't work in all illnesses, you know. Oh, uh, Bobby, don't think I'm a cruel old man. Will you listen to the truth? Yes, sir. Your dog can cause terrible illness if he goes on living. He can harm other people as he's harmed Edward. Would you want that? No, sir. But Spot wouldn't harm he anybody. He already has, Bobby. He can't help it. He's a sick dog. And what he has can't be cured for. Now, will you believe me when I tell you that we're only doing what must be done? Will, will it hurt him? No, no. No, no, it won't hurt him. Will you go home now, Bobby? I'll uh, I'll come to see you tonight. All right, Doctor. Good. Bobby, 
Remember, boy, the things we lose in this world aren't lost forever. What we love comes back to us. I know, Doctor. That's what my pa told me when my mom went away. Well, Jimmy, what are you looking so glum about? Same reason you are. Dr. Gillespie, you aren't fooling me. I've known you too long. Ah, you're just catching a little cold. My diagnosis is you're suffering from a small boy under the skin. Dr. Gillespie, give me one day. Just one day. Jimmy, we can't. We can't. We've taken the same oath. And sentiment can't interfere with it or medicine would go back to the dark ages. All right, then give me an hour. One hour. Oh, what can you do in an hour? Talk to any doctor who might have treated Carlton in the past, get his medical history, prove to you that you were right in the first place and that I was wrong. If only he weren't going into the paralysis stage, Jimmy. Well, I might try it. But a layman wouldn't know enough about hydrophobia to simulate advanced symptoms? He might if he'd been told about it since he was admitted. Ah, oh, nobody on our staff would alarm him by giving him such information. Now, I'm not thinking about anybody on our staff. I mean his mother. Oh. Jimmy, she just might be the type to pry into a medical book and try and outguess the doctor. One hour, Dr. Gillespie. Oh, all right, Jimmy. Thanks. You get the information if there is any. I'll send for Mrs. Carlton, but be back in an hour, or I won't be able to wait. All right, Diana. You don't have to strap them down. Give me the scalpel. Oh, Dr. Gillespie, can't you? Dr. Gillespie. Jimmy... Where have you been? I expected you 20 minutes ago. Oh, Dr. Gillespie, the, the dog, have you... No, I know. He's only chloroform. Oh, good. But I was just going to start. Carew has been screaming for the test, and Mrs. Carlton's backed him up. Well, we won't have to make it now. Oh, Jimmy. You mean you got some information? Yes. Edward Carlton has a history of asthma since he was five years old. That isn't necessarily psychosomatic, Jimmy. Well, I think it is in this case, and so does the doctor who brought him into the world. A chronic asthmatic is usually born with some evidence of an eczema rash. If the asthma is hereditary. Carlton's asthma is primarily caused by an allergy to dogs, though. Well, that does make a difference. And it didn't start until he was five years old. That's right. And I think I know why. So do I. Come on, let's have a talk with Mrs. Carlton. A dog? Why, of course he wanted a dog when he was a child. He didn't know any better. You ever let him have a dog? Of course not. I wouldn't have one in the house. Didn't you have a dog when you were a child, Mrs. Carlton? I did not. My family wouldn't have permitted it. Or didn't you ever want a dog uh, when you were a child, I mean? Well, I may have wanted one, but I never got one. Mm, how old was your son when he started to want one? Oh, how should I remember that? Four, five? Or wasn't his desire for a dog strongest just before he started to get asthmatic attacks? I... I don't know. I, and didn't you fill him with a lot of poppycock about dogs being dangerous and unclean? Well, they are. Why are they? Because you had to turn your mind and heart against something you couldn't have? That isn't why Edward is ill. He's ill because a vicious beast bit him. Vicious? <laughs> and Mrs. Carlton, I want an honest answer to one more question. Now, what did you do between the time your son was admitted this morning and the time you came back to visit him this afternoon? Why, why, I, uh... You marched straight over to the library and read everything you could find on hydrophobia, didn't you? Mm. And then you came back and told him what he was facing. Well, I... I thought he should know how sick that dog had made him. Uh, how sick you'd made him. When you told him he'd come to a paralysis stage... He displayed that symptom immediately. I think we'd better go see Edward right away, Dr. Gillespie. Yeah. And, and don't you move out of here till we get back, Mrs. Carlton. I got a few more things to say to you. Hello, Doctor. I feel sort of... Uh... 
Uh, you've been under sedatives for a few hours to quiet your nerves. Have you... Have you started the treatments yet? Treatments are all over. How long have I been now? Oh, only a few hours. But it takes from 15 to 21 days for Pasteur treatment. My mother told me. Your mother told you too much. You haven't got hydrophobia. I was bitten. You saw the bite. It's right here. Well, for a fellow who was paralyzed a few hours ago, you can sit up pretty quickly and throw those covers back, can't you? Carlton, you need treatment for neurosis, not hydrophobia. Get up out of that bed and get your clothes on. But where am I going? Home, so we can have that bed for somebody who's really sick. You mean you're not going to do anything to help me? Oh, we'll help you, all right, sure. I want to see you for an hour a day, every day for the next month. It'll take you that long to realize what a sap you've been. <laughs> Take it easy, Spot. You'll be home soon. Yeah, and I'll bet you're in for the best dinner any dog ever had. Oh, he won't even think of dinner until he's tried to lick every freckle off of Bobby's face. <laughs> that was a <laughs> mess of freckles if I ever saw one. Oh, look, Jimmy. There's the boy now. Yeah, sitting on the steps of his house with his head in his hand. <laughs> bet he hasn't eaten much today either. Doesn't even look up? He will. I'm just going to open the door and let Spot out. Jimmy, there aren't many living things that glad to see each other. <laughs> I can't tell which one of them is wagging most, boy or dog. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he finally saw us. He's coming over. Well, everything all right now, Bobby? Oh, gee, doctor. He was. Can, can he stay? Well, he can stay if you want him. Oh, I want him all right. Honest, I do. Honest. Do you believe him, Jimmy? Oh, I think he might be telling the truth. Well, I guess you can keep him, Bobby. But we're sending you something you're going to need. It's a new bite, Bobby, to replace the one you sold. A new bite? Yeah. Gee. <laughs> well, goodbye, Bobby. Goodbye. Come on, Spot. I got a big bone for you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't seem too happy about the new bike. Oh, he will be later, Jimmy. Not now. All he cares about now is that his dog's home again. In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare. Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Jimmy, when I think how close we came to ruining that boy's life, it, it gives me goose pimples. It was close. And wouldn't be easy for a young fellow to get over. Well, Mrs. Carlton and Edward won't give him any more trouble. <laughs> I noticed Mrs. Carlton when they left here. Come in! Oh. Dr. Gillespie, I have a ticket you sent me for. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Just uh, put them down there on the desk, Diana. Two for the dog show and two for the new play at the Mohawk da, tomorrow da. night. Well, my dear doctor, does this mark the opening of your private social season? Uh, well, I thought I'd relax a little, Jimmy. Good, good. But I just remembered I can't go to the Mohawk Theater tomorrow night. Oh, oh well, that's too bad, Dr. Gillespie. Shall I take the tickets back and get a refund? Oh, no, 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 no. I, I hate people who buy things and keep on returning them. <laughs> Here, Jimmy, you take them. Hmm? You're free tomorrow night. Oh, but, but I... Oh, I, I'm I... sure one of the nurses will be happy to go with you. But perhaps Nurse Burner. I've, I've, 
I'd better get back to my patient. Oh, sure, yes, yes. Run along. Yeah. Dr. G. <laughs> well, confounded Jimmy, you don't want the tickets to go to waste, do you? <laughs> Dr. G, there are times when you're as subtle as an outbreak of bubonic plague. Uh, well, she's a nice girl. <laughs> All right. You win. And thanks. Well, what about those other tickets for the dog show? They're for Edward Carlton and his mother. Who knows? They may buy a dog. <laughs> It'd help make them better human beings. Certainly would. But I know something they won't find in that show. They'll never find a smart dog that's one quarter collie. <laughs> you no, know, Jimmy, I'm afraid they won't. <laughs> You have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. This program was written by Joel Murcott and directed by Joe Bigelow. Original music was composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Georgia Ellis, Ed Max, Isabel Randolph, Jeffrey Silver, Perv Pullen, and Vic Perrin. Dick Joy speaking. <laughs>